Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make this sable palmetto tree using SpeedTree. For this project I'm going to use the following images as reference. So, let's start. First I'm going to add a trunk tube generator. I'm going to set a length of 30 and an absolute radius of 0.8. Then, with the profile curve, I'm going to widen the bottom part a bit and also reduce the radius at the top. After that I'm going to apply the bark material. And then I'm going to increase the twist parameter on the UV tab so it doesn't look too repetitive. Now I'm going to add the dead petiole bases. To do this I'm going to use a fin generator. This generator is useful if you want to attach meshes to your trunk or branches. By default, it will attach a plane, just like you see here. In this case I prepared a material with this texture and three custom meshes. Here you can see them, they are just slightly different at the top and have different UV unwraps. I made three models because I didn't want a repetitive look all over the trunk. Then I exported each of these meshes as OBJ. For this it's important that your object is centered at the origin. To have a correct orientation when importing into SpeedTree you need to choose Z forward. Here you can see those meshes already imported. If your orientation isn't right, you can try to change it by choosing one of these options. Now I'm going to add the material. You can manipulate its size by going to the Geometry tab. In this case I'm going to set a value of 0.6. With the Start Angle parameter you can rotate it upwards or downwards. I'm going to choose a value of about 0.4. Now I'm going to add more of these bases, so I'm going to go to the Gen tab and change the mode to Interval. Right now there are just three bases around the trunk, so, to fill the whole radius, I'm going to increase the count parameter to 4. Then, with the frequency parameter we can add more steps. And after that we need to increase the spiral parameter. A value of 1 gives a good result. We can also add some spreads so they don't look too aligned. Now, if you want to change the scale of these meshes along one axis, you can go to the Geometry tab and manipulate the X, Y, and Z values. I added some variance to these parameters so they don't look too similar. Then, I'm going to add some curl. The curl will look better if the mesh has more subdivisions, but try not to add too many. Adding variance to the parameters helps to break the uniformity. Here you can see that the interval generation mode maintains the pattern even if you change the length of the trunk or if you bend it. Now, there are some palm trees that have the bottom without these bases, so, to remove some of them, I'm going to increase the first value. Now I'm going to add more detail to this bottom part of the trunk because it looks very flat. First we need to increase the length subdivisions and then, with the distribution curve, we can push them towards the bottom. Then we can add some displacement by going to the Displacement tab. I have a height map in the bark material, so, to use it I'm going to change the source to Material. Then we need to increase the radial amount value to see its effect. If the mapping is set to use UV you will not be able to scale the displacement, but it will be possible if we change it to fit to geometry. Now I'm going to add the petioles, so first I'm going to add a branch tube generator. Then I'm going to change its boundary values so they only show at the very top. I'm also going to increase the count parameter to 5 and the frequency to almost 24. Then I'm going to assign the material to this generator. Now I'm going to reduce their length to 0.25 and add some variance. After that I'm going to decrease the start angle value and use the parent level curve to give them this shape. And maybe I can also decrease the length of the upper petioles just like you see here. I can also add some spiral and spread to break up the uniformity. 
Now, the petioles are flat, so we can achieve that look by using the squash parameter. I'm going to increase its value to 0.5 and to rotate it 90 degrees I'm going to change the rotate value to 0.5. Then with the profile curve of the radius parameter we can widen the base and also make the tip of each one thinner. After that we can add some gravity and adjust its parent level and profile curves. Now I'm going to add the blades. I'll start by adding another branch tube generator, and I'm going to hit F to focus just on one. I'm going to change the generation mode to absolute steps to have a better control on the number of blades. First I'm going to change the boundaries and then I'm going to increase the steps to 23. To have blades on both sides you need to increase the number per step to 2. To give them a fan shape, we need to manipulate the start angle parameter along with its parent level curve. These tubes are just going to carry our blades, so I'm going to add a frond generator and assign the blade material to it. Here you can see the mesh I made for this material using the cutout editor. Now I'm going to change the start value to zero otherwise they would like they are floating, and also turn off flip otherwise random blades will be flipped. Then we can go back to our tube generator and change their type to spine only. Also, set its visibility value to zero. For the length, I'm going to use an absolute value of 2 plus a 0.3 of the parent length. Then I'm going to add some gravity with variance, and with the profile curve I'm going to lessen its effect at their bases. With the parent curl properties, we can help to break up the uniformity more. In this case, I'm going to add some variance to these properties. Now, here you can see that some blades are being rotated. To have all of them aligned, I changed the alignment value to zero. Then we can unfocus to see how it's looking. Now, if you look at the references, you will see that most of these palm leaves are folded. We can achieve that by increasing the sweep value. And we can add some variance to this parameter, so then each palm leaf has a different fold. But you will notice that it doesn't have the expected result. To fix this you need to change the cohesion from random to cohesive. That way, all the blades on a same palm leaf will have the same sweep value. Then we can add some late noise and use its profile curve to remove this effect from their bases. To change the whole orientation of the palm leaf we can use the roll value, just like you see here. We can add some variance to this parameter and again we need to change the cohesion to cohesive. Now I'm going to edit the width of the blades, I'm going to decrease its value by using the profile curve. And after that I'm going to add some fold, curl and roll. I made three different textures for the blades, so I'm going to add those other two by going to the geometry tab. To curl the petioles even more, I'm going to add a curl force. Then we need to rotate it 90 degrees. And after that, we can go to the forces tab and use the profile curve to have this effect just at the tip. Now I'm going to add a wind animation. First we need to activate the wind. To do this, right click on the fan icon and then hit enabled. A bar will appear under this icon. With the bottom left arrow you can set the wind strength and with the top left arrow you set the gust strength. This bar will indicate the range of values that the wind may take when a gust occurs. 
the frequency of gusts is controlled by the right-hand side arrow. You can also disable the gust to have a constant wind strength. This is useful when you are going to define your wind parameters. To go to the wind properties just click on the fan icon. In the settings group you can see that you can also set your wind strength. Under this parameter there are the response time properties. The strength parameter defines the time that it takes for the model to react to changes in the wind level. And the direction is defined in a similar way but with changes in the orientation of the fan. Now, in the VFX branch motion group you can find a set of parameters called shared properties. These properties are assigned by default to the first generator on our model, which is in this case the trunk. Here you will see curves that you can use to define the bend, turbulence and twist for the lowest and highest wind strength. The black bar here indicates the current wind strength. To see what each of these ones do, I'm going to put all of them at the minimum value. With the bend parameter we can set how much our trunk is going to bend. With the turbulence, we can add some deviation back and forth from the main bend point. Once you add some frequency to this turbulence, you will see it oscillating around the main bend point. Right now our trunk is only bending in the opposite direction of the fan. To make it oscillate to the sides, you can increase the twist parameter. And finally, with the start parameter, you can define where your wind animation effect starts along the tree. I'm going to decrease all their values since right now they are too exaggerated. Now, you can notice that the other generators don't have a wind animation on their own, they are just following the trunk's movement. To add a wind animation to this generator, you can go to the Animation tab and then hit Apply. You will see a number on the generator. This indicates that its animation is controlled by the level 1 set of properties. Here we have almost the same properties as before. When you have more levels of animation, it's better to momentarily disable the lower levels. Here we have a new parameter called independence. By increasing its value, you can make the branches have a not too synchronized movement. If you go to the animation tab, you can control the strength of your animation with the weight parameter. And with its profile curve, you can change from where the animation starts along the branch. We also have a frond animation which you can control from the VFX frond motion group. Here you have similar properties like bend and turbulence. We have a new property called ripple. A high value of this parameter will add a wavy movement to the fronds. Now, you can also set your animation by using the wind wizard. Here you can choose what your model resembles most among other parameters. Sometimes it may not give a perfect result, but it's a good starting point. Then you can adjust their parameters if you want. For example, I'm going to decrease the bend of the trunk and also the frequency of the turbulence. I'm also going to reduce the turbulence of the petioles. And maybe also its frequency. Now, you can make your own wind animation. To do this, first go to Window and enable Timeline. In the end parameter you can define the number of frames that you want to use. I'm going to use 150. And you can also define the FPS for your animation. Then you need to enable Wind. Here you will have a curve to control the strength of the wind from the start to the end of the animation. 
If you set it to a constant value then the wind strength will be the same during all the animation. You can try different curves according to your needs. Once you have your animation set, you can export it as an Alembic file or as an FBX. To export the wind animation you need to check this box. On the wind strength parameter, you can choose between three options. The first is current which will export an animation with the current wind strength. Here you can also set the FPS and the length of the animation. You can use custom if you want to export the animation with a different wind strength. Or you can choose timeline in which case it will export the animation we did before. In this option is not possible to change the length of the animation since it's already defined in the timeline. Another thing you can do is enable loop. This will try to match the end of the animation with the beginning as possible. The wind gusting is also disabled in the timeline option since you have full control on the wind strength here and then you can hit OK. By the way, you can also export the animation with an FBX file. Since I'm going to export it to Blender, I'm going to change the cache format to PC2, which is one that Blender can read. Once you are on your 3D program, you can import the STMAT file exported along with the Alembic or FBX file. To do this, you need to install the SpeedTree add-on. If you exported it as an FBX, you need to add a mesh cache modifier. Then, here, choose the PC2 format and then on the file path find the PC2 file exported along with the FBX file. Now you can see the animation. As you can see, the preview runs slowly, so it's best if you export your model at a low resolution to work with it and then make the render with the high resolution one. And that's all for now. Once again, the files will be on my Gumroad. Thanks for watching.